I come from a small county outside of Washington, D.C. And me, my mom, my brother, we moved so many different places growing up. And it felt like a box. It felt like there was no getting out. My dream was to become uh, a rec league coach. That's, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to stay home and, and help the kids out and, and be a coach. I love basketball so much. I love playing it. I just never thought that I could make it to college, NBA, or stand up here today in front of you guys and be an NBA MVP. It's just, just a surreal feeling. And I had so much help. So many people believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. So many people doubted me and motivated me every single day to be who I am. I fell so many times and got back up. I've been through the toughest times with my family. But I'm still standing. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? What's the point of being realistic? He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. I'm going to do it. It's done. It's already done. The second I decide it's done, it's already done. Spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. It's hard. Easy is not an option. It's hard living. Life is hard. See, it's hard when, when you are... Uh, 49 years old, been working on a job for 17 years, and they come in and tell you, you're finished, and give you one week severance pay. And you got to start all over again. It's hard when you're married and raising children, and your children are crawling, and your husband dies. Unexpected. It's hard handling just the tragedies of life. It's hard. When you're working on something and, and you put everything you have in it, and it doesn't work out, you lose your money and other people's money. It's hard. It was rough when I lost my job. And I could not find a job. It was humiliating and embarrassing, borrowing money. And then I couldn't pay the money back when I told them I would. That's rough. How people look at you, how they respond to you. It's very hard. It's humiliating. And, and last, my mom. I don't think you know what you did. had my brother when you were 18 years old. 
three years later, I came out. We were stacked. The odds were stacked against us. Single parent with two boys. By the time we were 21 years old. Everybody told us we weren't supposed to be here. We moved from apartment to apartment by ourselves. One of the best memories I had is when we moved into our first apartment. No, no bed, no furniture, and we just all sat in, in the living room and just hugged each other. Because we, that's what we, we thought we made it. And, when, you, when something good happens to you, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to look back to what brought me here. And you wake me up in the middle of the night in the summer times, making me run up a hill, making me do push-ups, screaming at me from the sideline of my games at eight or nine years old. We wasn't supposed to be here. You made us believe. You kept us off the street put clothes on our backs, food on the table. When you didn't eat, you made sure we ate. You went to sleep hungry. You sacrificed for us. You the real MVP.